You're in the trenches with Dave Lappin, presented by First Star Logistics. The Cincinnati Bengals fall 27-3 in Nashville as the Tennessee Titans were as hot as the Tennessee weather today. Be sure to follow First Star Logistics on Twitter slash X for details on how you can win great prizes each week the Bengals play the season. Dave Lappin was on the call on the First Star Logistics Bengals radio network, and Lapp, not the kind of day the Bengals or their fans expected against the Tennessee Titans. No, absolutely not. Um, you know, it was obviously the second quarter was the was the downfall. There's no question about that. Um, they certainly didn't expect that to uh, unfold the way it did. Second quarter numbers are actually a little bit crazy. The Bengals had the ball for seven minutes and 29 seconds. The Titans for seven minutes and 31 seconds. It was almost an even Steven time of possession. But you talk about a team that did something with the football and a team that didn't. 16 plays for the Bengals in the second quarter for a total of 29 yards. 19 plays for the Tennessee Titans for a total of 233 yards. And uh, and they put touchdowns on the board. So that was that was obviously the, the difference in the football game. The Bengals averaged less than two yards of play in the quarter, whereas the Tennessee Titans averaged almost 13 yards of play uh, per quarter and uh, for, for play in that, uh, in that second quarter. So... Uh, they did anything they wanted to. Uh, Derrick Henry rushed four times for 51 yards, had a 29-yard touchdown run. Um, you know, Spears, this kid Spears from Tulane, nice little change of pace back. He had a couple of carries for 17 more. Tannehill was 8 for 11 for 165 yards and a touchdown quarterback rating of 145.1. Uh, Hopkins had two catches for 45 yards. Um, they had three different receivers catch at least two passes for 26 yards or more. They had a bunch of big plays. They had seven plays of 15 yards or more in the second quarter. They had only given up uh, 18 plays of 15 yards or more in three games prior to this football game, and they gave seven up in one quarter. So they got uh, sliced and diced just about every way you can you can imagine. And then offensively, there wasn't any support to what, uh, the, you know, this – if your defense is struggling like that, the best thing to do is keep them off the field. And uh, the Bengals couldn't uh, couldn't certainly get that done either. The Bengals, you know, they now have the road again against Arizona next next Sunday. Day that this the sad I saw was teams that start the season one and three. Only fourteen percent have made the playoffs since nineteen ninety. And Joe Burrow today, twenty of 30, 165 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but he was under pressure the whole time, and, and you could tell. He is not the Joe Burrow we've seen since he was drafted by this team. No, Joe Burrow right now is medically limited. And, uh, you know, in the pocket, he's close to 100%, very close. But, you know, that when he's doing that type of thing, uh, he's he's able to perform. But still, it's short to intermediate stuff. It's not He's not able to goose the ball down the field like we've seen him do it. You can't put that kind of pressure on that right calf. And then the other part of it, when you have to, if you do have to try to get him out of pocket and extend and create, pick a percentage. I mean, you know, you're just rolling the dice on, is this the player where he's going to get injured? So you have a very limited Joe Burrow, no question about it. Uh, you know, he had a, had a fumble today, uh, no, no interceptions, no touchdown passes. Like you said, 20 to 30 for 165 yards. Um, but he is not, he is not uh, playing the type of football that, you know, that everybody's accustomed to seeing, including himself. Does there come a point in time where you say, okay, Joe, we, we need you. This is not a short term. This is long term. You're going to be here many years to where you just say, we, you run the risk of a further injury, some other bigger injury. Because he got a lot of pressure. And you talked about that in your keys about the guys like Simmons being able to bring the pressure. And they brought it. Uh, does it come a point in time where he, he actually could suffer a worse injury because he cannot get out of the pocket the way he needs to? Yeah, I mean, that's that's his um, that's his answer to pressure is uh, make people miss, extend and create. And right now he's kind of a sitting duck in that regard. So, you know, you don't want to have a situation where um, he takes a shot and he took plenty of them today where, you know, you injure something else. And uh and, or if you try to get out of pocket and your calf gives you a little bit of an issue, you injure something else. So, yeah, I mean, there's probably probably decisions that are going to going to be thought through and made. They felt like, you know, he was he was good enough to go. He felt like he was good enough to go in this one. Um, but the way that unfolded in the second quarter, it, uh, it, it got away from him quickly. There's no question about it. 
I, I know we don't have you for a lot of time because you got to get on the bus. Dave, where does this team go from here? I mean, fans are going to be frustrated. We know that. That's part of this, the whole thing and the entertainment value of it. But what does this team have to do to get on the right track? We thought it was showing that it was getting there against the Rams, but today it was like it took 10 steps backwards. Well, I mean, <clears throat> they they haven't scored touchdowns. I mean, I, I, the, the first drive was uh, an indicator. You know, you go the – the length of the field in 11 plays, and you, you have to settle for a field goal at the three-yard line, and that's all the points that you scored. All you do is go back to last week. Tennessee went up to Cleveland and got smoked by the identical score. They got hammered 27 to three, and uh, you know everybody was uh, was beside themselves down here in in Tennessee, particularly the head coach. I mean, you know he was apoplectic basically, and uh, so what did they do? They went back to work and and got after it and. And turned it around by an identical score. I mean, that's there's 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 really no choice. I mean, you just have to go back to the drawing board, and uh, you know, every 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 game is different, every team is different. But I'll tell you, every team in the NFL is capable of beating every other team in the National Football League. There's no question about that. So uh, it's 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 not an easy uh, dynamic traveling out to Arizona and, and getting in the right uh, right column. But right now, the Bengals do not have a win in the AFC. They don't have a win in the AFC North. They don't have a win in the conference. The only win is uh, an NFC win, and Arizona would be another NFC win. But they got to start winning games in the conference and in the division to crawl back out of the hole. Higgins goes out. Rib injury is what was re being reported. And then also Cam Taylor Britt looks like he took some friendly fire uh, and went out, looked like in the neck, shoulder area. Any Concussion. Any he was being evaluated for concussion. Gotcha. Um, okay, Dave. Uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a long week, but the Bengals do get that, get a day back. It was a short week having the Monday night game. Um, you, you, you're in charge. What does this team do going forward? Well, what, what, it, what it has to do is, is take care of all the situational stuff better than was taken care of in this football game. When you get in the red zone score, uh, you know, on third down, don't go zero for six to start the, start the game, uh, they went 0 for 4 in the second quarter alone. So like I said, if one side, if one phase of the football team is struggling, the other one has to step up and support it, not uh, desert it. You know, I mean, just have to start playing better complimentary football. There's no, um, you know, there's no magic elixir or anything else. They just have to go back to work and, and grind and, uh, and, and, and get better. That's the bottom line. You've been listening to In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, presented by First Star Logistics. Again, a reminder, be sure to follow First Star Logistics on Twitter slash X for details on how you can win great prizes each week the Bengals play this season. And, Dave, I know you got to get on that bus, so any final thoughts you have? Not really uh, not really too much. I think we've covered uh, we've covered everything, Dave. I mean, at, at, at this point, it's, uh, you know, it's beating a dead horse. Uh, talk is cheap. They have to do now is go out and do something about it, not talk about it. Actions speak a lot louder than words, as the old saying goes, and that's where they are right now. All righty, Dave, we appreciate you taking the time. Safe travels back home, and we'll see you this week in the trenches. You got it, sir. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self motivation leadership and appreciating your teammates are key at first star logistics you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family build your future by working hard like i did you'll see results both on and off the field call first star logistics today and be part of our winning team